So yeah, good morning, uh, uh, good morning, Ovo and Andrea. Um, we would like to start, Andrea, since since in the Balconer project, you have been the artist who uh, we think has lived the longest in Prince Lauerberg. You were born in East Berlin and uh, lived a little bit further, but then moved here. So we would be very curious to know actually about, um, yeah, about your artistic uh, and maybe a little bit personal life in Prince Lauerberg and in East Berlin. Can you tell us a little bit about this? Um, yeah, I grew up in East Berlin, in Köpenick. And I moved to Prenzlauer Berg in, I went to school in, in Köpenick. And then I lived for four years in Moscow as well. My parents were working there. And um, I went to school in Moscow. Botschaftsschule der DDR, Embassy School of GDR and UDSSR. Ah. <laughs> and, 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 and I moved to, I did my Abitur, how is it in English? Abitur? Uh, A-levels, yeah. Yeah, in, in, in Köpenick, where I grew up, and, and the first tower blocks, uh, the first models of tower blocks in, in GDR, the first type. And then I moved to Prince Berg in 94, uh, 84, <laughs> not 94, when the, um, yeah, I tried to study and I finished. I, I, I couldn't study teacher, teach, I, I wanted to be a teacher, to become a teacher for Russian and English, but I couldn't do that. And then I moved to, to Prince Berg and I was occupying, like everybody was doing that a flat for two or three times. I was occupi occupying flats here. And I still live in Prenzlauerberg and was part of the kind of independent scene and called independent scene. Yeah, not, we didn't call it underground, more independent scene. Yeah. So uh, you gave us this beautiful letters. Maybe we can uh, through some of our. Let me let me share screen. Share screen so we can see some of it, and then we can guide us maybe through. Yes. Yeah. Beautiful. Um, but we should start the. Yeah, this is number ten. Wait, wait, wait. We should yeah, go number back. ten. And start from the beginning, yeah. So this is you. That's me. So yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Time. yeah. <laughs> in those times, this must be in which were those similar haircut now. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you know. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry again, Joanna. Yeah, it, 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 always beautiful. Okay, there was a model for, for you now he did some portraits and it was like a kind of family, this the family and the daughter is still a, a close friend for me. Um, Clemens Brosche was Clemens the painter. Brosche, but, uh, he died in uh, 2014 mm. and he did loads of, I think, 14 portraits of me. Mm -hmm. The whole series, I guess, of the portraits yeah. of AP. Big yeah. AP called, so portraits of AP, Andrea Pichet. <laughs> mm -hmm. But were you, because you said also that you were not allowed to study in yes. East Germany, you wanted to study art or, right. or the literature, you were not allowed, so what do you mean you were not allowed? You cannot choose any... No, they, 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 they didn't tell that it wasn't allowed for me and they told me, so I'm not, uh, I'm not good enough. And so, and I tried and tried and I applied, I think for six times every year. And, and when the wall came down, shortly after when the wall came down and I, I applied again in Weissensee, uh, my family and all we realized that it was a Stasi thing. Stasi is the is the the secret. How is how to yeah, secret service. intelligence service? Yeah, mm -hmm. 
and as well, it was just a Stasi problem, but it's too complex to explain that yeah. all the circumstances. And because I was part of the underground or independent scene, or lived in Prenzlauer Berg, and they tried to to get my my parents to be to be part of the Stasi, and they didn't do that. They hasn't done that, and they told to my parents that I won't be allowed to study if they don't do that. Was, yeah. But it's, too, it's, it's really complex and very not easy to, to explain that in five minutes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, but it is, I mean, it, I mean some, of, um, some of these complex uh, schemes, uh, they are even, I mean, they are written about regularly, so I'm sure uh, people will understand also like uh, from outside what you were mentioning that basically um, basically because your family was not uh, was refusing to become part of the surveillance <coughs> system operated by the the state and they were uh, using you as a bait uh, to um, to make them to convince them that they should so it's an honorable stand that they didn't, they didn't, they probably um, refused to spy uh, on their friends and family. Yeah. Uh -huh. And yeah, and so this is, uh, you were saying that, but that despite the fact that you were not studying, you were very much part of this independent scene of Prince Lauerberg. Yeah. How, uh, how can you tell us more about the scene and what, you you were you stressed that this is that was independent. So what, in which sense was it an independent scene? Uh, it was independent because it was more against the the official rule of the the government of the state, and it was more to be non-conform. And there was an there was a real life and kind of underground, but we didn't call underground. We said um, independent musicians, artists, and loads of writers. And most of them were living in Prenzlauer mm. And we had loads of parties and there were some galleries. And this, what you have is a, she is a Tina Bara or Harald Hauswald. They, they still photographers and or Tina Barra, the, the, the image before. She's a professor in, in, in Leipzig for photography. And yeah, this is a typical image for in the courtyard of Prenzlauer Berg. Mm. And this is one of the, the private galleries in flats, uh, uh, Gehloch. Mm -hmm. Wohnungsgalerie Delors, yeah, in, Delors, yeah, in Knarkstraße. And there, there was also a gallery called Wohnmaschine, was, uh, and Friedrich Log was funded by Friedrich Log, and he still runs a gallery. Mm -hmm. Friedrich Log. <laughs> and where is his <laughs> gallery? Huh? Where is the gallery now? Potsdamer Straße. Just, just before Tagesspiegel era. In the West. In the West. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. And this is uh, he. Uh, this is Peter Wawertzinek, well-known writer, and during a performance, and he has now a, a grant at Villa Massimo. Oh yeah. Mm -hmm. We called him Shappy. S C Happy. <laughs> <laughs> Mm -hmm. <laughs> and uh, this is during a performance and reading yeah mm -hmm. yeah and uh, you know for us one of the reference in, in the balcony was of course the fact that the, the, the borders between public and private were so blurred during the quarantine and in completely different manner politically they were also blurred uh, in East Germany and in East Berlin because when you, what you show us the apartments um, or also the churches, right, in, in Prince Albert, mm -hmm. were important sites of resistance. Can you uh, 
us a little bit about the church life and art in churches uh, in Prince Albert. Mm, Gethsemane Kirche was more um, meeting point for all the intellectuals. I also went there to, there was a kind of Frauenkreis. Ah, okay. Mm -hmm. Frauenkreis, yeah. maybe we can explain that it's a women's union. Yeah, 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 yeah. kind of. Mm -hmm. And this, we met there every week and it was clear that the Stasi was observing us and all the people mm -hmm. and I there was not art art was more in the Umweltbibliothek in Mitte in Zionskirche mm -hmm. they had shows mm -hmm. yeah not Gizimani Kirche so also churches like had this um, role of Independent role for independence scene. Yeah, like, they, they, mm -hmm. in, could be independent. Artists uh, becoming gathering points. Yeah, the the yeah, but after the wall way, the wall came down, so it was also discovered that in may, some churches also also was Stasi and involved and is not easy to explain but in at first the churches could be independent for and not controlled from stasi and the official life mm -hmm. and the controlled and regulated life mm -hmm. yeah kind of a yeah. zone of exclusion of some sorts yeah creating yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. and what is this photo uh i don't know a punk, uh, punk, um, Stasi, it's a Stasi photo, it's a, mm -hmm. it's a observation photo from Stasi, from Matthias Domaschke archive. Mm -hmm. So they have loads of photos like this, this BSTU copy. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, that's one of the streets where the balcone took place. <laughs> yeah, it's Rieke Straße and Randolph, Randolph Müller, who, who took part at the balcone, he gave me that photo. It's Rieke Straße. Yeah, Rieke Straße. Yeah, where he lives. <laughs> yeah, and this is, yeah, where it was be in, in GDR time. And the balcone, balcone, so most of them were locked or damaged and we haven't had so much balcona. <laughs> mm -hmm. Inaccessible. Often, yeah. Right? Mm -hmm. yeah. Mm. Yeah. The wall. This is an image from Andreas Rost, a photographer. Um, he, he is also a photographer in that new book, uh, Das Jahr 1990 Freiling with Alexander Kluge, published by uh, um, Spectre Books. And he, he, did, he took loads of photographs from the wall in Prenzlauer Berg and in 1990 mostly. And this is uh, Oderberger Straße, Dänenstraße, is Prenzlauer Berg. So near Mauer Park today. Near Mauer, near Mauer Park, yeah, yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, exactly. Yeah. I have uh, maybe one um, one question because you said uh, balconies were mostly inaccessible uh, to people; they were mostly run down. Um, uh, were the balconies that were, let's say, uh, the balconies that were more uh, usable, uh, were they used also for political uh, purposes? of propaganda or surveillance have you, did you ever observe something like this mm -mm. okay no, oh, no. Yeah. it was the, the 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 flats weren't renovated really old old flat yeah. with uh, uh, um toilets outside mm. simple uh, windows and in in winter time the the water were frozen and i can't i can't remember very in every winter the water were frozen 
the taps were frozen and whoa, the toilets and so and also the the balconies were damaged yeah, it wasn't allowed to to go on yeah yeah, yeah to use them yeah mostly it's also is berlin oh uh, yeah i know where it is bernauer strasse yeah, Really? They have this now huge, uh, huge mural of the soldier, you know, jumping over. I think. Yeah. Okay. Ah. Okay. The wall Museum, actually now. Yeah. Ah, yeah. This, oh, yeah, yeah. Exactly. Mm -hmm. the wall Memorial. Yeah. This is near Leipziger Straße, probably. Yeah. And Michael Kirchstraße. Ah, Michael Kirchstraße. Mm -hmm. And. Yeah, this is one of the the, the flyers they mm -hmm. had private made for Umweltbibliothek from Zion's Kirche, Kirche, yeah, from Zion Church. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, and actually, uh, here we jump to your work. Yeah, which is very much. <laughs> this is not really my work; just my my research. Archive, yeah, research, yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. So what 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 are those? These are because I grew up um, I grew up in a, in the first type of prefab in GDR called Q3R, and I'm still busy with all the floor plans and uh, from the prefabs and how they look like and how they transformed and how how is the, the private design. A really private design of the, and it's mostly visible on in, on balconies. The private design and mm -hmm. and this okay. is Tillman Park. Mm -hmm. Tillman Park, the the built that area Tillman Tillman Park. This is also Tillman Park. Oh, ah yeah. yeah, I really like the the private design and um yeah, all it's like around. There. Appropriation of the appropriation of these prefabricated units and how you make them private in some sense, right? How you yeah. I have to say there are not them. many colors like this anymore. <laughs> and in Tenman Park, but like there are lots of lights, like in the night that you see, like lots of people put lights, like we mm -hmm. I see the light like just across, but like these sort of colors unfortunately don't exist, like the <laughs> green. Mm -hmm. Or like the orange, that kind of. <laughs> but Telmer yeah. Park was the, the the last flag project of the GDR uh, in is I mean in Prince Lauerberg, right? Because in, so I don't know if in in the GDR now uh, Halle Neustadt was built on the sa in the same time. Oh no, they they built that later. Halle Neustadt was built in sixty four. No, no, no. Um, and this in the 80s. Mid 80s. Yeah. 86, uh, I remember. The date is 86. 86? Ah, okay. <laughs> yeah, it's on in the. After okay. the factory. After the factory was closed. Because that's one of the reasons why Prince Lauerberg was unlivable. Because there was this huge factory that was putting fuel. Gasometer, not factory, gasometer. Gasometer, yeah. In industrial architecture. Yeah, but the the, the the district was pretty polluted from it. So that's why also so many houses were empty, I guess. Mm, no. No, they no the system no not that why. They 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 didn't give us a flat. It was really, really difficult to get a flat. We had to occupy. Mm and not ab about the pollution. Mm -hmm. mm. And to get a new, the Neubau Wohnung, uh, a flat in the prefab was really, really difficult because these were the houses with heating, with warm water and was all, all, only for the privileged people. Tier Park, all the Stasi people and or yeah. near the Tier Park area or Magdalenstraße, all the Stasi people got flats and yeah. Mm -hmm. 
mm-hmm, okay. That's all. This is also another domestication. I think this is <coughs> the time park. Came on back. Yeah, all these kind of balconies are Tillman Park. Very nice balcony. <laughs> I mean, actually, it's, it was like one of my, these balconies were one of my inspirations, of course, for the project. Really? Yes, of course. Because okay. I've been looking at them for five years now living here. And I was okay. <laughs> around them, looking at them, like curious. Nice. Yeah. <laughs> Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. <laughs> not really sharp yeah this is one of my favorite photos <laughs> yeah. very comfortable <laughs> to sit there Tillman Park Tillman Park hmm. we also maybe need to say that I mean, the, it is still very active. People, uh, people still live in Talman Park. It's a very busy uh, is, living yeah. ground. Uh, yes, it's a very busy living ground, and um, uh, and actually, I also believe that it is also one of it's one of the reasons uh, why this area that I live in is a little bit different than the rest of the Prenzlauer Berg. Uh, it is, it yeah. Kind of calms down the gentrification in a way. And I do not know how much the rents are. So my might might be there is also depends on the rents. They are not yes, so high on the top. Still yeah. Still living, yeah. Know, on. So uh, there are still like kind of from the, those generations who are still living there. Yeah. So it, of course, uh, uh, they keep it uh, feasible, uh, that kind yeah. of low rent for them. Yeah. Mm-hmm. That's what I know. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> Typographies of different sorts. Yeah. Ah, this is the book. Yeah. So this is the the Bible. If somebody wants a reference about independent scene in Prince Lauerberg in the eighties, <laughs> <laughs> this is the Bible. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, and there were loads of of self-made, uh, not loads, hundreds of self-made. Uh, all the people took the recorded their own music in a very cheap and simple way and they made the, all the musicians and artists on a ment- and on Verbrechen they both are artists Ronald and Robert Lippock or uh, auf Rot zur Liebe and um, yeah and they they did the tape covers by themselves mm. Yeah. So this was also a form of art, of course, these tape covers. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And a good way of, important way of communication. Yeah. And perhaps in Peking, they lived in my house where I live. Wow. In the same building. <laughs> perhaps in Peking. Perhaps in Peking, yeah. They, in, in, they, yeah. Skeptica, expander des Fortschritts, yeah. Yeah, oh, it's so unsharp. <laughs> yeah. This is a work I have done yeah. recently, last year, when I was invited to to the show at um, Pal- called Palace de République uh, at Kunsthalle Rostock. I am. And actually, we didn't go to Palace de République. It was an awful building. It wasn't regulated for all the... It was for the government, the Volkskammer were there and so, and all the FDJler, how to explain FDJler? Uh, Apparatschik? Yes, yeah. <laughs> all the Apparatschiks, yeah. <laughs> they, they went there and, and we didn't go. It was an awful, for us it was an awful building mm. and before the wall came down. Mm-hmm. And I was, and when I was invited there, I, 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 so I, I didn't know at first what to do. And okay, give me. I told to the, I said to the curator, give me a week, and then I will decide. And then I had the idea to 
build that um, um, to to make a model of that Palace de Republique from all the uh, tapes of the or some tapes of the GDR. Is this your personal archive, uh, Andrea? You have them all. Is this your personal archive? No, it's from Heinz Hafermeister from that book. Wir wollen immer artig sein, and yeah. he he was a partner of me, mine, and so and still a very close my family. He's a still a very close friend, and he gave me. He has a huge, huge archive of, okay. of all the independent Prenzlau back of all the Prenzlau back independency, and. Uh, all the Prenzlauer bag and the GDR archive was under our bed. <laughs> so, <laughs> so, <we> are, <laughs> so sometimes I was hating that and oh, all the GDR. <laughs> <laughs> and yeah, and I rebuilt the the or made a so the the again the the Palace de Republique with all the independent and underground tapes from GDR time. Yeah. Ah, uh, this is another one. <laughs> this I was in, invited to Halle, uh, to Museum Moritzburg in Halle. Mm -hmm. And for uh, 50 years, 50 anniversary of Halle Neustadt. Mm. Halle Neustadt was a huge, huge area of prefabs, and they built that town for for chemical workers in '64. And 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 what I did is I collect all the floor plans from New York, from from prefab buildings only, from New York, Dublin, all over the world, and or I have all the pre. Uh, floor plans from prefabs uh, built in GDR. And what I did here is to, uh, I stick together the, the, in one to six scale, the floor plans or the, of two room and three room flats and one room flat from New York, Dublin and GDR. Okay. And what is interesting that they are in the nearly same measurements. Oh yeah. They are prefabs all over the world. Yeah. Mm. Otherwise they wouldn't stick together. Yeah, they are standard. Or fit together, yeah. Yeah. Oh, uh, not a good quality. <laughs> are you using like are you using like a like an MDF or uh, yeah, very cheap yeah. material. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Cheap wood and plexi. Uh, um, plexiglass and also prints from former uh, uh, on fabric. Uh, what uh, this is in museum? This is called Club Zukunft. This is last year in 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 um, Museum Dieselkraftwerk. Okay. In Cottbus. And this is this is the uh, three room flat from New York, then a two room flat from GDR from Berlin, and above is was the from Dublin, from Ballymoon one flat. Uh, this is an is a work uh, was shown in Müga. Museum of Contemporary Art in Antwerp. And in the back is the work of, of um, Annemie van Kerkhoven. Mm. And this is a work called Zwischen. And now I need to read. Yeah, <laughs> 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 uh, Gabriele Knappstein, she was, I have a really good text from Gabriele Stein. Stein now the director of Hamburger Bahnhof and she wrote about that work also in the in the catalog before uh, in between yeah and, uh, 
Okay, the next one. <laughs> no, sometimes, sometimes your installations are like micro cities yes. of some kind, you know, you could say they are bits and pieces of environments that bring this domestication and architecture and prefab and you also like uh, beton, cement very much, I think. And like, what, 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 what is this um, world here on this picture? Uh, this is, but this looks like a city maybe, yeah. But it's only cheap material and the f uh, footprint is a, for that installation is called, es kommt drauf an. A quotation of Karl Marx Feuerbach thesis, the last one, mm -hmm. and uh, and 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 this is the footprint is um, the uh, the floor plan of the Moscow work, and I have to read. So then, as come off on. Ah, yeah, Konstantin is the floor plan one of the Russian constructivist architecture. Konstantin Melnikov's Rusakov Workers Club built in Moscow between 1927 and 1929. Mm -hmm. And nearly the same time when the IG Metall building by Erich Mendelssohn was built. And the show was in the IG Metall building built by Erich Mendelssohn in 29 till 30 mm. so and in tats they called it three times working class three mm -hmm. times working class working class yeah yeah because i used the cheap material from baumarkt so how do you call that in english yeah baumarkt yeah, yeah. 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 Baumarkt, I guess. yeah. yeah. And I used cheap materials that are taken from destroyed prefab, the doors and the windows and and the kind of fences and staircases, part of them. Um, I put them together. Yeah, the cheap materials from several times and periods. And You're right. mm -hmm. Yeah. Another view. <laughs> yeah, nearly the same material I used for um, for the HMKV curated by Inke Arns in seventeen in in. Was well, the show was called Brutal, the Brutalism Appropriation Society, oh. and the floor the the footprint here is the floor plan of one of the flats of the Corbusier's um, um, Unité Habitation in Marseille, and also I used the measurements of um, Modulor he created. So and I arranged all the things from different times, periods, and areas together in, in that footprint. And, the, and this one, the, the, uh, the fabric is taken from Tashkent, is one window okay. mm -hmm. in Tashkent. Yeah, I showed there in National Gallery in 2010 and had also time to, to research there. Mm -hmm. All the prefabs and well, the Soviet uh, buildings in Central Asia. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's very interesting. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's such a mix of uh, very different like visions, and among and uh, I really like very different amalgam like of the in terms of aesthetic in Central Asia especially. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Ah, yeah, this is the work Double Bind. I was invited from Gabriele Knappstein for Architectonica 1 and Architectonica 2. And now they bought the, the, the work and I'm happy. 
and M M. Yeah, and this is uh, in one of the Rikain, and this is in the scale one to two. Um, the floor plans of the very common prefab type VB called VBS 70. They developed that in the 70s, and this is the four room flat, two room flat, and the one room flat. So very abstract. And it's also a display for all my for my archive taken all over the world from the prefabs in mm. yeah, three times I this is one and on the other side two projections also. Mm. Yeah. Also cheap material. It has this really, um, really powerful effect when the abstraction uh, of those places also takes place with the cheap material. Uh, and I think this also creates such a break in the, uh, in the white cube logic where uh, things have to become always more shiny or like kind of better material. And uh, then it really breaks in the whole aesthetic uh, of the white cube, especially I think when you install in the white cube, uh, it's such a break. Um, Maybe white cube, can, white cube can be made with the prefab. <laughs> I think so too, honestly. I think so too, I think the whole logic should be changed. But that this is such already like kind of, uh, I think putting up uh, where, how people are living uh, and uh, what are the general living conditions and where most of the world actually living mm -hmm. in these prefabrics, it's still the same. Mm. It's something, it's a condition that really hasn't uh, changed, I think, for the, for the working class. Mm -hmm. So um, then when it appears in the, let's say, in the temple uh, like of culture, it's such a, it, it creates this uh, discrepancy, um, this jump. It's, I think it's very powerful. Mm -hmm. And also there is both like the dilemma of those is that it, it is both some kind of a violent gesture, but also a necessary gesture. Yes. Like you said, people wanted to live there because there was warm water, there was infrastructure. So you needed this. However, it was so uniformizing. It was so violent modernist in some sense, right? But both sides were needed. Mm -hmm. I guess. Yeah. The, you, you can, there is a dilemma kind of uh, <laughs> shown in your, in your work, like emerging from your work, this kind of di modernist dilemma. That's why it's called double bind. Double bind, yeah. Work. yeah. <laughs> and yeah. this, the image before, it was created for Werklights Festival now and later shown at KOW Gallery for the show Stadtschlawinereien. Mm. I think there is no English title, Stadt <laughs> So, um, yeah, and I'm still busy with the private and with the private design and what becomes when the people design their own world and, yeah. And within the regulations somehow the yeah and with also with very cheap material so mm -hmm. <laughs> also only baumark stuff to 20 euro the whole sculpture so the future is baumark nah? sorry the future the zukunft is baumark the future is baumark yeah <laughs> Bauhaus. Bauhaus, exactly. Bauhaus and Bauhaus. Bauhaus, Bauhaus. 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 Yeah. Yeah. This looks like a, from quarantine because this is how playgrounds were used. Exactly. Like the, like, ah, okay, yeah, exactly. In prison, in prison sculptures, <laughs> in prison playgrounds. No, I was invited. This is part of the, the Werklights Festival for my work, Delirious Dinge too. And I was invited for last year for uh, um, Ruin and um, 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 for the Werklights Festival in Dessau for the 100, for mm. 100 years Bauhaus. Mm -hmm. And this is mirrored, the same installation is mirrored uh, in front of a castle. 
and behind the or orangery. And what I used is also the cheap material from Baumarkt <laughs> and GDR fences. And then uh, it was destroyed just when I was finishing the, the work, it was destroyed. And so we decided to, we have to fence it. And, and, and then I decided, okay, then I uh, um, combined that with my work and, and painted that pink as well. Like, yeah. so it was, then it became, yeah, this is. The fence became, yeah, the, fence yeah. became the installation. Meta fans. Yeah, yeah, it's really like yeah, the meta meta <laughs> no. I think that was the last picture. Um, yeah, no? the picture we don't have, but maybe you can just tell us two words about is your contribution for, for our project, the Balcone, uh, which was also an architecture intervention somehow. Do I have it somewhere now on my iPhone? <laughs> um, yeah, because I don't have a balcony, um, I was, I took one of my, my, my uh, photos taken in, in Thelman Park. So it, I covered, uh, yeah, what a shame that we don't have an image. <laughs> yeah. you I can find the image, you superimposed, um, your old 19th century refurbished, renovated, beautiful Prince Laura <laughs> yeah. 19th century house yeah. with what used to be the progressive <laughs> part of Prince Laura yeah. the pre <laughs> buildings. Yeah. I tried, I tried to find mysteries it. were like kind of mismatched with each other. Yeah, I, I have to yeah. say. But we can also edit later, uh, maybe. If yeah. this yeah. one, yeah, maybe it's better to to have an image, yeah, yeah. But can you tell us just for the end? So you've been in all these years in Prince Lauerberg. How how does it feel for you now, uh, being here since the eighties and seeing what's happening with the gentrification and the internationalism? And <laughs> like, interesting question. <laughs> People yeah. like us living here. Yeah. <laughs> so again. People like yeah. us, people like us living here. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. How does it feel? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like a Rolling Stone. <laughs> yeah. No. <laughs> no. So, yeah, it's full of gentrification, and sometimes it's not easy to to. Yeah. All the people in my house or around me, or they own their flats and. So, and loads of people, they're not interested in, in the history or in the past, not the history, it's just three years ago. The, and the past, yeah. And when I go to my supermarket, only on the, the Kassiererinnen, how do you call them in English? The cashier, the cashier, the cashier, the cashier yeah. person. Uh, they are real Berliners. And I try to speak in Berlin accent. But not to try. I'm I'm in East Berlin. I grew up in East Berlin, and is my original accent. I speak with them in Berlin accent too, kind of solidarity. So, no, <laughs> a very strong. I do it in a very strong way. So, <laughs> and it's you get you get a how how do they respond? Do yeah, you? they they appreciate that. Yeah. So they ah. They laugh and and you give them hope. Then, you give them hope. Yeah, and then they realize, ah, okay, we just want some more Berliners here. <laughs> 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 yeah. We are among yeah. <laughs> yeah, I think it is. Um, uh, I believe it is the it is the time now for uh, for us who uh, chose uh, to live in the city is to understand its histories and mm -hmm. um, bridge uh, our concerns 
with those histories as much as we can to be able to you know connect to a berlin that is not an only as a design of the you know uh, of the city municipality of this uh, of the berlin they want to show as it is because i believe that there are many berlins and then the, of course it's always like the, there is one berlin that's always marketed mm -hmm. Uh, and use as a brand and uh, but I think it is our role now since we choose to be here uh, since we choose to be here to understand the histories and to bridge our concerns uh, together because there are some quite matching concerns also uh, and it's a sort of of course then it would be a new Berlin uh, but not disconnected from its past. Mm -hmm. I hope. This is my hope. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, thank you. So, yeah. My yeah, thank you. Not... It was like a, a beautiful studio visit online. <laughs> I know. It was really... It's, it's I can bit... do it better personally. <laughs> yeah. No, we have to meet personally. Absolutely. We have to come over and see the remains of the archive that was under <laughs> oh, yeah. yes, Definitely. It would be nice. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Now that we can have more coffees and now coffee shops are slowly opening up so we can really like, uh, we can right. do more real meetings soon. Yeah, and let's meet at Randolph's, at Müller's. For yes. Drink. yes. Yeah, yeah. And we are also planning our opening party uh, soon. Ach, yeah, 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 yeah. In June or when is when did you? Let's come? see. Let's see what are the regulations. I guess. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It depends on that. Yeah. I think like we can start in the park and like the following group because there will there are always there is always the following group uh, who wants to continue. They can we can all continue in the uh, in Middle. the yeah. yeah. <laughs> Okay, let's do that. <laughs> yeah, looking forward for the party. And thank you for inviting me for that interview. Yes, of course, of course. And we'll do also the written version. Yes, uh, which is that. Okay. We'll, we'll work on the written version and send you. Yeah. Okay, yeah, and please, and, and also you can ask more questions. Okay, if you right. like. We can, ex we can extend it a little bit. Yeah, it's so valuable for us. Yes, it's really, yani, it's really? really important. Thank you. It's really, <laughs> really history for us. Thank you so much, Andrea, for sharing all of this with us. No, thank you for inviting me. Yeah. <laughs> for your interest also. It's, yeah, not so many people are interested in the part, past. So mm. that's why. So I'm surprised. And yeah, thank you very much. Sure. <laughs> Okay. Ja. Sehr gut. Vielen Dank, Andrea. Und wir Vielen geben Dank. uns, wir, wir, wir lesen und arbeiten noch den Interview und melden ja. uns. Ja. ja. Okay. Ja. Ja. Dann bis bald. Ja. Vielen Dank. Bye. Bye. Tschüssi. Tschüss. Ciao. Ciao.